So this is what the instrument looks like. This is what GeoSig built for us. And this is the cradle. The cradle, it, um, we would drill a hole into a concrete slab, like in the garage, if it was the uh, most likely spot. And we would bolt it. There were leveling screws here, three points. There's an orientation pin, so if, if you take the instrument out and you put it back there, it, north is always north. And then there you'll see these little threads here for the instrument which mounts. This is the instrument. This is an accelerometer, a modern accelerometer. It's made by a Swiss company called Colibris. There, it, there are accelerometers and there are accelerometers. You have them in your car to activate airbags. Those accelerometers probably cost a few tens of dollars. John Evans actually spent a lot of effort testing all these um, accelerometers on the market for a previous uh, project called Tremor. This sensor is sufficient to record seismological grade data. This costs a thousand dollars. So I have lots of people saying, well, why can't we just do this with the sensors and laptops? And you know, they're ten dollars or they're thirty dollars. And the answer is you can, but you won't get very good data. If you, I'm t speaking to the seismological community, you want good data, you have to pay for a good sensor. So that's what it looks like. It's down here under this board. Here's the battery. If a host needs to change the battery, you just pop, you unscrew that, you undo that connector, you put the battery in, and that's it. This is the A to D here. Uh, it's a thousand sample per second A to D made by uh, Texas Instruments. It's, it's decimated to 200 samples a second using finite impulse response filters. There's the flash memory of two gigabytes. And there's the communication board for the wireless. So this is with the lid on. The wireless antenna, there's an Ethernet cable if you don't want to use wireless. There's the AC power. If you want to use GPS, it's there. But as I said, we probably would normally operate it using NTP. That's the console for the technician to configure it. These big threads go down to the base plate. So if we actually needed a host to swap out an instrument, all they have to do is unscrew that, take the instrument out, put it in a box. And with the lid on, that's what it looks like. These get screwed on top, and there's a padlock if you want to secure it. So that's the instrument. It's about 10 inches.